Revolutionary Greetings, Comrades, on the 26th of September, 2023, at 10 uh, o'clock p.m., uh, 2200 hours, uh, the SADAC Extraordinary Meeting of the Ministerial Committee of the Organ Troika issued a press statement following a virtual meeting uh, which, which was held. <coughs> Uh, the minutes are about seven pages, so we will not uh, read the minutes uh, of the Troika. Uh, but uh, we just want to talk briefly about Zimbabwe uh, on what it says in the statement. Uh, I saw many comments uh, in the build-up to the meeting that uh, 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 some, I think it was Honorable Dendai PT said, uh, tweeted something like, uh, uh, this is the meeting that everyone is waiting for. Uh, uh, such comments generate a lot of interest, <laughs> particularly from the opposition supporters, because uh, the belief or the thinking, which of course we dismissed in this platform, was that uh, SATAC was going to instruct uh, Zimbabwe to hold uh, fresh elections following the disputed uh, elections uh, in August. But you recall that as the Zimbabwe Communist Party, we said in 2017, in August 2017, after our Central Committee meeting, that unless we have, uh, we have implemented electoral reforms, every outcome of an election is going to be contested. The 2018 outcome was contested. The 2023 outcome was contested. The 2028 outcome is going to be contested. So unless we then have a, a implemented electoral reforms, every outcome is going to be contested, is given. So um, this is why we say the uh, SATAC is not going to instruct, instruct Zimbabwe uh, to uh, have a rerun of the elections. So uh, in their minutes 2.2, uh, they talk about the uh, headline that says Government of the Republic of Zimbabwe. That is sub-headline. Government of the Republic of Zimbabwe responds to the SADAC Electoral Observer Team preliminary statement. So it talks about this. What it basically talks about? Uh, it talks about the personal attacks directed at uh, Dr. Mumbai, who was the chairperson of the uh, uh, Observer Team. SATAC Observer Team, and also the uh, president of Zambia, uh, that it was unfortunate for Zimbabwean government and the ZANU-PF to direct those attacks to the chairperson of the Observer Team as if he wrote the report alone while his team was, a, or every country in the SATAC region was represented in, in, that, in that Observer Team. And uh, they are also saying uh, it is wrong then to make these personal attacks to an individual. That is the chairperson uh, and also the president uh, of uh, Zambia, uh, 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 who was then attacked by <coughs> uh, the ruling party in Zimbabwe. Uh, what, what also caught my attention, uh, which we have been trying to explain in this, but uh, some comrades thought otherwise, 2.2.7 says, uh, Troika noted that in terms of section 11.8.2, I'm quoting, uh, when SEOMs officially submitted their election reports, member states which held elections, right, may, let's underline may, let me read again. Troika noted that in terms of section 11, Point eight point two. When SEOMs, that is a South a SATAC a Observer Mission Team, a officially submit their election reports, member states which held elections in May, number one, consider the recommendations advanced by the SATAC Observer Mission for improving the conduct of elections. Right. So in other words, uh, in other words, the observer team from the SADAC region makes recommendations, which 
the country that was holding elections, in this case Zimbabwe, is expected then to consider, because if they use the word may, may consider, uh, meaning there is room, right, for Zimbabwe or any member state not to consider the recommendations. There is no way in these minutes where it instructs Zimbabwe. Uh, it then says, point number two, submit to the chair of the organ a response to the SEOM report. So that's basically what the report talks about. So, so, so then the rest of the report on Zimbabwe, it talks about the uh, uh, personal attacks of the chair of the observer team who happens to come from Zambia and uh, the head of state in Zambia. That's basically what, what it talks about. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, it then, then goes to talk up then about uh, uh, the upcoming elections uh, in Madagascar. So we have, say, we have been saying that uh, yes is king, <clears throat> that elections must be held under our own constitution, right? We must ensure that uh, we hold elections in line with our own constitution. Every person has a right to campaign, has a right to stand for office, has a right to hold the public meetings, uh, has a right to be voted into office and also to vote for a candidate of their choice. That is guaranteed in our constitution. Uh, the SATAC guidelines on democratic elections becomes a bonus because if we follow what our constitution says, we will not even look into the SATAC guidelines because they under the rights of every citizen, the Bill of Rights. All of us have rights to participate in the electoral process. So, as I conclude, SATAC, in this case, uh, uh, we know that uh, the report uh, will go to the heads of state uh, for discussion. SATAC is not going to instruct Zimbabwe to hold the fresh elections. When, when a journalist, one journalist was interviewing me, uh, about the elections in Zimbabwe, I said uh, the next election is in 2028. Uh, the journalist looked surprised because uh, there is this uh, uh, media campaign, social media campaign, uh, 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 that uh, seeks to prepare people for an early election. But what is it that we need to do, or what is to be done? The Zimbabwe Communist Party has been clear at its first Congress in 2019. We outlined the how, which we have discussed in this YouTube channel, how we need to dismantle the deep state, which is militaristic in nature. So, unless we dismantle the deep state, we will not have free and uh, fair elections. That's, that's it. So the task that we have as communists, as progressive Zimbabweans, and everyone that gives us solidarity is to answer this question. How do we dismantle a deep state in Zimbabwe? then we can have elections that are free and fair. In the other interview, <clears throat> which I need to clarify as I'm concluding again, I have said in that interview, Zim I interview, that we are not victims of, of a, a imperialism in Zimbabwe. And I want to clarify this position. I said we are not victims of imperialist forces in the context 
that ZANU PF was created as an imperialist project. Right? And, and uh, this is what I meant. That because ZANU PF has been damned by its masters, it cannot turn around and uh, cry victimhood and say it is under attacks from imperialist forces. So I made that point in this context. There are many examples where stooges of imperialist forces get damned like Mobuto Sasek of Zaire. So he could not turn around in, 2000, in, in 1997 and uh, <clears throat> seek solidarity from the progressive world, claiming that he, he was under attack from imperialist forces. No. So ZANU PF was created by imperialist forces to curtail the influence of the Soviet Union, Cuba, and the other socialist countries in, in this part of Africa. So they cannot, therefore, today, claim to be victims of imperialist forces. I said we are victims of the looting class, right? So we are part of the anti-imperialist struggle ourselves. We reject the stooges of imperialist forces. We cannot shield the ZANU PF and stand on one corner with the ZANU PF and they agree that they are stooges of imperialist forces. I mean, that they are victims of imperialist forces. No. Rejecting ZANU PF and the ZANUism as a political ideology does not in any way suggest that you are standing on one corner with imperialist forces. No. So that's the point that I was making in that interview. So we must answer this question. How do we dismantle the deep state in Zimbabwe? Please uh, share your views. I am Mabuto Nicholas Mabena. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you are on TikTok, please do follow us. Otherwise,